Hello, in this lecture we're going to work on a master budget and we're going to start off with the sales budget over here. We're going to have our information on the left hand side and then we're going to enter that information into the blue area over here. Uh, the master budget can be a bit intimidating because of one, the amount of information that is given in a problem like this and two, because of the amount of information we have to input can be very large. However, if we do it basically in chunks, step by step, and there is a step by step process in order uh, and order that we have to do it in basically starting of course with the sales budget also want to point out that we are going to do a master budget and we're thinking about manufacturing companies uh, and the reason for a manufacturing company type budget is often because it's the largest uh, type of budget we're gonna to have to think about because we are gonna have to think about purchasing and inventory so obviously if you were working on something if we had a budget for something that was not uh, a manufacturing company then we would still have a budget, but we would take out, of course, a lot of the, the manufacturing stuff, probably a more simplified type of budget. Okay, so the first thing, uh, we'll, what we'll have in our information is we want to know where we're at at a point in time, where the budget is going to be for. So we're going to be budgeting for, in this case, July, August, and September. So that'll be the third quarter. And the information we're generally going to need to budget looking forward is we're going to need what happened basically in the past, and we're going to need some general rules in terms of how we're going to budget. So first we have what, what happened in the past. So that's going to, of course, be the balance sheet as of 630. So that's going to be our beginning numbers that we're going to start off with. And then we're going to use those, of course, to budget to the future. So the balance sheet's going to be over here. And then a problem like this will generally have a lot of other miscellaneous information, including things like uh, what we think our, our sales are going to be and, and our policies in terms of basically our collections and, and things like that. So we'll go through these things as we work through the problem as needed, talk about where they're generally going to be in a problem as well as where we might get them in real life. So our budget's going to have to start off with basically sales and that's because everything else is going to be generated from that. We can't budget anything else until <laughs> we know uh, how much we're going to we're going to receive in sales. So that has to be where we start and much of the sales budget's just going to be given to you when, within a problem. So down here in this problem we have are July, August, and September. So we're taking July, August, and September. And note, a lot of times these problems will have basically a, a June and October type numbers in there because uh, we're going to need those to make some of our estimates. So remember that we are working on the third quarter, July, August, and September, and we, we're going to give data for before that time, possibly after that time, in order to help us with parts of the budget as we go. And so they're giving us basically the sales in units here. So remember, we sell things. We sell inventory if you want to make up some type of widget that we're selling. That's, that's fine. We're making something and selling it. These are the number of units that we're going uh, to sell. And we're going to sell them at $24. So that's going to be given in the problem. In real life, of course, we'd have to project that in some way. And um, uh, that would be part of the process of the budget. But any kind of problem on it, generally going to be given within the problem. So 20,006, 19,006, uh, and 20,001. So let's go up here. I'm just going to plug those numbers in here. 20,006, 196, and 20,001. Notice I'm not I'm not uh, putting a comma in there or anything. Of course, I'm formatted. The cells are being formatted already in terms of number format. Going to sum that up by saying equals sum, and I'm just going to sum that up. The 26 plus the 196 plus the 20,001 is going to add up to a total of 60,003 for the third quarter. Now that's units, and we're going to talk about now the dollar amount, which will be 24. That's how much we uh, sell these for. Therefore, we're going to multiply this out now. So 20,006 units in July times $24 would be equals 20,006 times 24 and enter. Way I said that, you probably thought I was going to do that in my head there, but no, I was going to say, we're going to do that here. We're going to say this equals the 196 units that we're going to sell times the $24 that we sell them for and that'll give us the uh, 47400 and then in September we're going to say this equals the 20,001 times the $24 that we sell them for and so this is how many units we're going to sell and now we're going to sum up the dollars sales that we believe that we're going to have so this is going to equal the sum of and notice uh, sometimes I'll try to format that we could format these in terms of, of dollars over here as well just so we can see the fact that uh, when we're separating units from dollars which can be a bit confusing in these types of problems 
All right, step two is to make the production budget. And uh, you might be thinking, well, uh, the production, how many units are we going to product? That produce, that's what the production budget is going to tell us. And you might be thinking, well, we already figured that out, right? We're going we're gonna to have uh, 60,003 in sales. We're, we're going to have to produce the, that many throughout the quarter. However, uh, note that uh, we might have some units on hand already, and we might want to have a cushion, basically, to have some extra units in case uh, we sell more than we thought. We don't want to be short on the sales. So we're going to start off with uh, the budgeted units for each month. And of course, we've already calculated those numbers. Those numbers are going to equal the 20,006 for July. And then for August, we have the 196. I'm going to select tab to go to the next cell. And September is the 20,001. And that, so we're just bringing those numbers down. So of course, this is how many we think we're going to sell. So that's what we're going to start off with in terms of how many do we think we're going to produce. Then we're going to, we're going to try to decide Basically, do we want an ending balance in the budget? Meaning, do we want to work into the budget that we'll have some added extra leftover units after we sell our 20,006 in inventory just in case our sales are greater than that? So how would we come up with that number? We're going to have to scroll down and see that will generally be given within the data. And this will be kind of like a policy that we'll have within the company saying how much do we, do we want in the ending inventory? And in this problem, it says that Indian finished goods uh, percent of next month's uh, expected unit sales. So what that means is basically we want to predict, predict next month's unit sales and have a, an Indian finished goods inventory equal to 80% of next month's. So that's how much kind of cushion we want as of the end of the month in case sales are higher than we expected them to be. And so that's pretty large uh, variable. So we're going to say then that... Uh, next month, we can think that we're going to start with next month's budgeted sales for July. So for July, then we're thinking about uh, August's sales in the next month. So that would be the 19.6. So we're thinking about the 19.6. And then we're going to say that we're going to take 80% of that to be our cushion. So it's going to be 0.8. If we want to make that a percent, we can go to the home tab. We can go to the alignment group and we can go to the percent. Therefore, we're going to say that we're going to equal the 19.6. Those are going to be the sales in the next month times the 80%. So that's how much we want to basically have on hand at the end of July that's still on hand after the sales of the 20,006. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to say, well, for August, we're going to say equals and take the September sales. We want to take next month's sales according to our rule times 80%. And we're going to say the 80%, make that a percentage, and multiply that out. So of the next month's projected times the 80%, we think we want, as of the end of August, 16,080 units left over according to this, this policy. And then you might be going, well, what about uh, September? Because obviously our, our sales budget only goes up to September. And that's one of those areas where the, the problem is going to have to give you some more data in terms of, well, what do we think the, the budgeted sales are going to be for October, which is outside of the, of our um, quarter that we're budgeting for, but we need that if, if this is the policy. So we're going to have to go down to our data, and that's why it gives us this October number out here. And we're going to say 20,006 is what we think is October, so we're going to have to uh, multiply that times the 0.8, the ending balance number, and we'll uh, take the percentage of that. And then multiply that out. So we got the 20,006 times the 80% and enter. Okay, so now we've just entered some labels here. So we have the ratio. We have the budget ending inventory in units. Remember, we're talking about units as opposed to dollars. Got to keep that in mind as we go through this. And then we'll add this up. So the required units of available production. That's going to equal the budgeted units. This is how many we think we're actually going to sell in July. Plus the cushion, what we want left over in ending inventory. So we're going to sell 20,006 and we want 15,680 in the warehouse as of the end of July, just in case we sell more and or to get us ready for August. So I'm going to hit tab. We're going to do the same thing. You could copy and paste the formula. However, I'm just going to calculate it a few times so we can see that calculation. So it's going to be the amount we're going to produce plus the amount that we want in ending inventory equals in September, the amount we're going to produce in September plus the amount we want in ending inventory. Okay, and now you might think we're, we're finished with that, but now we, this is what we need to produce, 
And if we were starting at ground zero, that would be the case. However, uh, we probably have some stuff in the warehouse already. So now that we know how many we want to produce if we had nothing, now we got to subtract out the stuff that's already in the warehouse. Now this number can be a little bit tricky. Notice I put the wording in here, less beginning inventory. So this is the stuff that's already in the warehouse. It could be a little bit tricky to, to get some of those numbers depending how the problem is set up. We do note that like if we skip over to August, we can see that, well, um, if the ending inventory that we want to have is uh, 15680 as of the end of July, then if it all accordance goes according to plan, then the beginning inventory for August will equal that number. So so we know that that's going to be the case. If, if we're going to end with, with in July 15680, then we're going to start in August with 15680 according to the plan. And of course, if we're going to end in August with 16,080, uh, then we're going to begin in September with equals this 16,080. And so we have that. Now, of course, where are we going to get this beginning number? Because once again, we don't have the beginning information. They're going to have to provide that in, in some way. Uh, one way that it often will be provided in, in a lot of problems, obviously, if we could look at the budget from, from the prior period to, to see that or see the actual numbers. On the balance sheet, we can see here that we have finished goods of this 325 540 here. That's in dollars, however. So notice the balance sheet, of course, is in dollars. If we could divide that by the uh, cost per unit, then that should give us the, the number that we want here. So we could try that. And if we scroll down, we're going to say that the cost, production cost per unit is 1950 in dollars so we can we can calculate it in that way we can say well this is going to equal the finished goods of three two five five four zero divided by the cost nineteen dollars and fifty cents means that we have sixteen six ninety four here also want to note that uh, there could be some rounding issues in these problems so notice that this one i'm rounding to the dollar and it's really got some pennies in there we are budgeting however therefore you know it's it's an estimate anyway, so a, a dollar rounding is not going to affect the budget in a material way. For that reason, I don't think um, using uh, pennies is is, is going to help us to make decisions that much. So we're, we're going to round it off, let Excel round it. Note that when you're using a calculation that has a rounded number in Excel, it does actually use the actual number being this number, this this ratio, even though it's only showing a rounded number of 16,694. So always keep that in mind when you're working with Excel because that could drive you crazy if, if uh, the calculations are a little off and you're thinking, why is that? So now we're going to subtract this out. So now we have, this is how much we need to produce if we didn't have any on hand, but minus we do have units on hand of this. Therefore, we only need to produce 19,586. We're going to do the same thing here. This equals the 35,680 we would need to produce in August if we didn't have any on hand, but we know that we're going to have 15,680 on hand. Therefore, we only have to produce 20,000 if everything goes according to plan. And then over here in September, we're going to say, well, this is 36,580 is how much we would have to produce if we didn't have any on hand, but we are planning to have 1680 on hand at the beginning of the month and therefore don't need to produce those. So this is going to be the units to be produced and we could sum that up for the quarter we could say this equals the sum of the units for july august and september would add up to the sixty thousand eighty six uh so take a look at this calculation you're going to see this a, a few different ways a few different times we're going to do the same thing when we start to calculate the materials so whenever we think about how much we're going to need in terms of a budgeting stance we're going to say well how, you know, how much are the sales going to be? We're going to need that. And then we're going to add to it how much we think ending inventory should be. How much of a cushion do we want over the sales price or in the case of materials over the amount that we're going to use? And if we add those two things up, that will give us the amount that we would need to produce if we had nothing on hand as of the beginning of the period, the month in this case. And then we'll subtract out how much we actually do have on hand. And that will give us the amount, in this case, that needs to be produced. In the case of materials, the, the amount that will need to be, to be purchased. Now that we know how many units we need to produce, we will then, next time, move on to uh, the raw materials budget. And, of course, the raw materials budget, remember, the units, the widgets that we're producing, 
is going to be made up of raw material. So if we're producing like guitars, then the guitar is a total thing. The raw material is like the wood and the glue and the whatever that are going to go into it. So now that we have the units that we need to produce in, to in total, now we got to think about, well, how much stuff do we need to purchase in terms of raw materials?